So I'm in the middle of my Trifid run now, and I'm taking two minute exposures on the Trifid Nebula, and they're turning out absolutely gorgeous. Hey guys, Dave Farina here from CosmosSafari.com. This is a great setup now. I'm really happy with the rig. Uh, as I said last time, this is my first ever rolling wheel rig, and I'm very happy with it so far. Some things that a few people mentioned to me that I thought I should share, um, that I'm going to take very seriously after my first video, was that I should really be unlocking my clutches um, when I'm rolling the telescope, uh, because you want to make sure that you're not damaging any gears, and so I, I spent some extra time making sure that my balance was perfect and making sure that, you know, I can confidently roll this down the driveway without losing everything or having it swing around and smack the mount or something like that. I, I'm considering maybe I can have this tied up in some sort of way because I'm not really happy with having this loose like this. Um, while I'm rolling it, there's enough going on and um, I know when I get to the bottom of my driveway that uh, the wheels can catch, and if the wheels catch, I need to not worry about what's going on up top here. Um, I need to be able to be focused on keeping this thing stable uh, and not letting it fall over, because it's on a pretty steep angle if it's hard to tell. The other thing that I'm going to work on tonight um, is simply to kind of get the practice in with this camera see what the exposures are like, see what um, the different types of uh, gain are going to do for me. I left it just at the standard defaults last time, and I don't know if that was a mistake or not. So I'm gonna do my best to try to work with some of that stuff. It's all about just testing the gear and seeing how it works tonight. Um, I also am gonna show you in my video here the new garage setup that I'm working on. So I am at the very early stages. I've got a desk in my garage now, which is gonna be awesome for you guys. Uh, it'll allow me to get content out there more quickly. And a few of you mentioned, you know, just to keep an eye on my gear, I don't go to sleep while I'm imaging. Um, given my neighborhood, you can see I live in a suburban neighborhood. So um, I need to be able to stay up all night. And rather than running up and down the stairs into my basement studio, uh, I've decided to start up a secondary studio here in my garage which is going to be the home base of operations for anything imaging uh, for the channel so that's coming together i'm excited about that so hope you're excited and let's check out the video So far so good, the wheels are rolling uh, pretty nicely here on along my sidewalk and I have it placed so that basically I can line this up on little marks on the ground. Um, so I'm looking for them right now and right there they are. So now that I have it lined up on these marks on the ground, I can lock my wheels down. So before I forget, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock these clutches back down and I've got this set up so that if I can get my counterweight down position from the very beginning, that should put me at a pretty good place for polar alignment so long as I have my mount exactly where I had it last time. Um, nothing has changed 
Uh, and that's one of the reasons why in my first video I was saying about leaving um, my mount locked down is because I wanted to keep everything as consistent as possible um, by disconnecting with the clutches. Um, by disconnecting the clutches, I basically have now made there be changes in my mount. So I'm gonna speak with Lost Mandy about the locking and unlocking of these clutches and, and see what they have to say about it because if they say that it shouldn't be an issue, I'm gonna keep them locked for numerous reasons that I've already stated. Um, but if they are worried about it also, I wanna make sure that I'm being safe about this um, from the mount perspective. So a few of you were asking about how I was keeping the mount from moving and that the wheels could creep on me while I was trying to do an imaging run. Now they do have these locks on them, but I'm not relying on the locks alone. As you can see here, the JMI wheelie bar system that I spoke about in my last video has these really nice uh, little outriggers. And if you look here on my sidewalk, you can see where I've been setting my mounts up each time. And so as long as I keep this consistent each time, I find by the way, if you spin like this, it goes a lot faster. Uh, and then if you need more torque to pick the whole thing up, you use that one. So I'm gonna go, just go around and I'm gonna turn all of these down. So as I'm turning all of these down, one of the things that I try to keep in mind is once again, placing this the same place each time, but also I need to make sure that it's level or as close to level as I can get. The reason for this once again is to make sure that my polar alignment needs minimal adjustment. So I think I'm gonna change these bolts out to something that is just like a normal regular bolt. That way when I go to do this process, it'll take a lot less time because I'll just use my electric drill and I'll screw this up uh, and down with the drill. And it'll also provide me a little bit more control um, over the process of leveling the telescope. One thing I really like about the Lost Mandy G11 are these two little leveling bubbles. So we've got a leveling bubble that goes in this direction and a second leveling bubble that goes in this direction. I'll be using the JMI wheelie bar system to level out the telescope mount. And from there, my polar alignment using the altitude and the azimuth knobs should be a lot easier and I should have a lot less adjustment than I would have in another setup where uh, I would have to deal with my tripod legs and uh, different location and different surface each time. All right, now that you see that I have leveled this thing up, you'll notice that underneath the wheels, um, they're not actually touching. All of the weight has been taken off of the mount and that's what ensures me that we're not going to have any problems with the mount rolling around. And this thing is pretty much rock solid. I can grab onto it and I can pull it around and it doesn't move any more than the mount would usually move during a night of imaging. Uh, when on the normal tripod. All right, we've got some clouds rolling in and I'm not really super worried about them because as I said, I'm just gonna be testing some stuff tonight, but I was hoping to get um, some shots of the moon. It looks like the layers that are just above the clouds are relatively transparent. So, you know, you might see those clouds rolling in and out, but you could probably shoot straight through them. Um, if you just change your settings a little bit and the moon's pretty bright up there, so I can see a cloud currently is going past it, but I can still see it. So I'm not really worried, but um, you know, I do need to get polar aligned and I can see a cloud right there in my way. So hopefully the clouds disappear and we can get some imaging in. So one of the amazing things about having this telescope on my tripod, is that I have my power cord coming in here and everything else is pretty much ready to go. My telescope, my computer, and I always make sure that my power strip is turned off before I plug my cable in just because I don't want any extra shorts um, going to my imaging computer and my camera. So now that I have everything like that plugged in, I flip on my power strip I've got my battery here running my Attic Horizon 2 camera right now. Um, 
At some point, once I get my power distribution set up on top here, which I have yet to make the case for, um, I should take at least one more cable off of this. Uh, but for now, everything is hooked up and I'll fire up my computer if it's not already running. Looks like it's already starting up. I've got my mount here, fire it up and it's going to come on. And Gemini 2 firing up. All right, so now that we're gonna get ready for polar alignment, another thing that I really like about this system is uh, with the Lost Mandy G11, they have this little button right here. And by pushing that button, it will shine a red light directly in onto a, my reticle for my polar scope and allow me to see through it while I'm doing my polar alignment. And I can see the Big Dipper and I can see Cassiopeia as well as the other alignment stars to get a nice clean polar alignment without having to deal with a flashlight up front or something like that. So one thing that I really am excited about that I'm not gonna be doing tonight is I've been recently using some software to help me do polar alignment. I've been using SharpCat Pro and I've been getting excellent results with it. So if you guys have yet to uh, use SharpCat Pro and you are doing astronomy with a dedicated astronomy camera, I highly suggest that you look into getting Sharp, SharpCat Pro. It's 15 bucks a year and it will permit you to do a uh, plate solving process while doing polar alignment and it takes less than five minutes for me, and I can have a better polar alignment than is ever possible with doing a manual polar alignment like I'm going to do tonight. All right, let's see. Hats on backwards, everyone. All right, excellent. So I can see Polaris is pretty close. Now I'll look up here, hopefully I can see Cassiopeia and the Big Dipper. I know the Big Dipper should be over in this area right here. Uh, I'm still seeing spots from staring into the light that I'm using to video record here. Ah, there we go. I can see the two bottom stars of the Big Dipper and that means Cassiopeia is right about there. So based on that, let's get the alignment for Big Dipper set up, and then polar alignment isn't quite as necessary as it would normally be. Okay, there we go. And there we go, polar align, folks. The beauty of doing polar alignment with a tripod system on wheels. Um, what did that take me? Less than 10 seconds to get polar aligned. So really, really exciting how much better this is. Make sure everything's locked back down. Okay, turn off my mount so that I can get the start sequence to work again. So I'm in the middle of my Trifid run now, and I'm taking two minute exposures on the Trifid Nebula, and they're turning out absolutely gorgeous. I am so pleased right now with this Attic Horizon 2, and this new setup where I'm inside and I'm able to just be sitting in my garage is awesome. You can walk right out and the scope is right here. So shooting trip at Nebula right now. Horizon 2 is at negative 10 degrees C doing its thing and cable management finally got that figured out tonight so yeah could not ask for a better night out here in 
the backyard. 